Right, we're here today, aren't we, on the celebrate Jesus' birth. And what a glorious time that was. I want to talk to anybody that's listening to this uh, Christmas service it's online, listening to a video somewhere around locally or in the world. That, um, I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a very nice Christmas. And, uh, and uh, also I want to encourage you at this time that maybe you've had through, come through a bad times with COVID and all that, and I, I don't know what each one's situation has been, but hey, it's good to come to come here Christmas time and hear some good news, and maybe it's encouraging or help you to be um, healed and helped from what maybe the years thrown at you this year, and I know it's been rather, a, rather a, a rough year for a lot of people, and uh, I don't know all your circumstances, but you know, God knows, and He is there for you in, even at this time. And at this Christmas time, he wants to uh, just prove himself to be who he is. Jesus, the beautiful Saviour. So we're going to read some verses uh, about his birth here this morning. And uh, his birth is mentioned in, in Luke. Um, sorry about the seagull. He challenges me about daily, but never mind. I think I can speak louder than he is. Um, so, Mary, who's one of the, the center piece of the birth, is um, mentioned in Luke chapter 1. And uh, she was visited by the, the angel Gabriel at a certain stage in her life. And it's in the first chapter of Luke, 26 verse. I will read it so you know what I'm talking about. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a girl never having been married and a virgin engaged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. And when she saw him, she was greatly troubled and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept revolving in, his, in her mind, what does such a greeting might mean? And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. And I think that this, this one of the encouraging things that God would like to say to people at this stage is, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the future. Hold on to what you've got. Hold on to um, faith. Take faith in God, and He'll see you through. So He said, Do not be afraid. And I, I mean, I've never seen an angel myself, but I believe from hearing from people that see them, they're quite big. I'm not saying they're ferocious, but they're big, strong looking beings and they take various forms. And here he's telling her the first words are, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. And you know, some people are afraid of God, um, but don't be afraid of him. He's, loved his, he's shown his love to mankind through, through the birth of his son Jesus. For you have found grace. He said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace. Absolute favour and loving kindness with God. And listen, you will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And God, the Lord God, will give him the throne of his forefather David. He will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages, and of his reign there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no intimacy with a man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a shining cloud, and so that the holy, pure, sinless thing which shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. And listen, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is now the sixth month with her who was, who was, called, who was called barren. For with God nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of its fulfilment. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. And the angel left her. And so here was a, here was a, a letter from heaven, if you may call, or a call from, that came from God, that this lady would be the, Mary would be the lady that would bring his son into the world, the saviour of the world. And uh, a couple of chapters later we read how the birth came about. 
you want, I want you to remember, notice that in that previous chapter, um, Mary said, let it be as you have said. She actually gave the, she gave the go ahead, she gave the green light to the angel that this could be done. Because I believe that, that God is a gentleman and he doesn't force things upon people. And really, in that there, she actually gave God the permission to allow this to happen to her. And, you know, I don't know, the woman that hear me, that hear, I'm saying here, if you think about it, how, how would you have reacted if you had been, um, if you had been that lady? How would you have reacted? Would you have said no? Would you have said yes? Um, obviously, her heart was soft towards such a thing, and she saw the possibility in it. Even though, even though it was a strange thing to happen to her, she realized that she should allow it to happen. And because she allowed it to happen, you and I today in this world, 2,000 years later, have a saviour and his name is Jesus. And this Jesus is the one that has, can save you from your sin, can save you from a, um, a godless eternity. He can take you from in death into the presence of God where you can live forever in his glory. So uh, today I just want to read to you just how, how that came about. Um, she gave birth to her son in 2nd of Luke, um, verse 8. Uh, ja Jacob, or Joseph, I should read the whole chapter, so. See girls beating me there. In those days it occurred that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole Roman Empire should be registered. And this was the first enrollment, and it was made when Canerius was governor of Syria. I think that word registered really means like a census, find out how many people the Roman Empire, um, how many people were in the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire is quite, a, quite a big, so if you think of everybody inside the Roman Empire at this stage, going to fill out a census form, and because of that, um, Joseph, who was in the town of Galilee in Nazareth, because he belonged, he had to go to Bethlehem to actually um, fill in the census form or be counted or whatever. It says Joseph went up from Galilee to the town of Naz from the town of Nazareth to Judea to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his spouse, his spouse wife, who was about to become a mother. And while they were there, the time came for her delivery. And she gave birth to her son, her firstborn, and she wrapped him in, a, in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for, in that place for them in the inn. And in that vicinity there were shepherds living out under the open sky in, in the field, watching over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone up all around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Again, this do not be afraid comes into, the, into this situation. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the town of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you by which you would recognize him. You will find him, find him, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly appeared with the angel and army of the troops of heaven, a heavenly knight with praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased, men of good will, of his favor. Then the angels went away from him into heaven. This is an amazing bit of scripture. This is fulfillment of the promise of the angel Gabriel that uh, had spoken to, to uh, Mary earlier on. And it shows that when God promises something, it happens. When God's going to do something, if it's, even if it's supernatural, He can bring it to pass. And this supernatural birth by way of the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary, for many people possibly, is just like a fairy tale. But for those that believe it, it makes it. It, it makes sense and it can change your life when you totally believe that God sent His Son, the Saviour, into the world. And um, 
when he was born, these, these shepherds, if you can imagine, here, well here in New Zealand nobody shepherds their sheep at night, but over there it was obvious, obvious that they didn't have fences and they needed somebody to look after sheep through the night. And this angel suddenly appears in the middle of this shepherding and on some pasture. And it say, <coughs> as it says, the angel of the Lord stood by them. And the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them. And they were terribly frightened. <coughs> so imagine if a, a, an angel appears while you're amongst your sheep and the glory of light from God shines. Yeah, I think most people would be frightened of that. But again, again the angel said, don't be afraid. That's all okay. And he said, I bring you great news, good news of a great joy. <coughs> For those that listen to me today, is this a good news of great joy to you that the Saviour was born? Has it got a meaning of great joy in your life? Because this is what it's supposed to do. The Saviour had been born, who came from heaven, is supposed to bring great joy to whoever embraces that uh, that good news, the good news that God sent Jesus to die on a cross for us, that we could um, have our sins washed away with his blood. And the proof of all that is rose again. It's a resurrection. And he went to heaven, that we can have a resurrection and go there as well. Jesus is the forerunner of what we need. Now what he did and where he went and how he went back to heaven is what he gives us and his being on earth for us. I like the word, like where it says, I bring you good news. Jesus is good news. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Jesus is bad news or take, take that thought from it. He is good news. It's slightly translated or non, uh, as the gospel, but really does gospel in its true, true form meant good news. Of a, great, of a great joy. So, hey, this is what it's supposed to be. Of a great joy will come to all people. All people includes whoever hears this. All people means all people on the earth who want this joy, who wants this life. Jesus came. Um, I'm just going to read a verse in the uh, 6th chapter of John. Verse 38. For Jesus, these are Jesus' words. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will and purpose of him who sent me. This is the truth that Jesus said, I came down from heaven. He was no ordinary human being. So, in his own words, he says he came down from heaven. He was the Son of God. He cannot be disputed. He said it. Jesus never told lies. So, uh, in, in view of that, we know that Jesus was divine and human at the same time. He is our Saviour. Nobody else could do it. Everybody else had, had a problem, had sin, or whatever. But he says that he came down from heaven. We have to hold on to that. That he was not he was a human being, but he was more than a human being because he was born of the Holy Spirit. Well, hallelujah. So that's the good news for for um, this Christmas. And I don't know how you're celebrating Christmas this this coming uh, week or well, this week actually. But I'd like you to think, hey, that I can celebrate this because of the good news. I can celebrate this because. I have a future because of Jesus. I can celebrate this because death holds no sting. Death is not a place to be feared as I trust in him. He is the saviour of the world. I just want you to hold on to this, this beautiful, beautiful um, promise of God that we can have eternal life through Christ.
that he has taken our sin, all the wrong things we've done wrong and we feel guilty about, he has taken them away. That is why he's such good news, because there is an answer to the earth's problems. There is an answer to everything that's going wrong or gone wrong, and maybe even in your life, um, you can rest assured that Jesus is there and he is the answer for you. So just just enjoy your, your Christmas today, uh, this week. It's, uh, it's good. We've got sunshine down here where I am in Southland, in New Zealand, and uh, the ocean behind me is very peaceful today. It's just a lovely, lovely spot here. And I'm sure that uh, Jesus wants to bring a calm and a nice happening in your life, just like we have here. Just like it, I'd just like everybody to enjoy Jesus because he is there to be enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, so I'm wishing you a, a very, um, very great Christmas and a happy new year from here in Kiribati, New Zealand. And uh, you go well.